Hello everyone and welcome to another most exciting game from the penultimate round of the 2019 FIDE World Team Championship. It's uh, Alexander Lyshuk of Russia versus Hans Tikkanen uh, of Sweden. Now Russia has been uh, leading the, this tournament since the very beginning and it's very impressive that uh, they you know, just uh, keep on uh, gaining more points. Uh, uh, like I said, this is the penultimate round and it's, uh, it's a very interesting game. I'm sure you're all going to enjoy it and I know what you're going to say. Uh, oh yeah. It's uh, finally a game played by Alexander Grishuk. Now, surely we're going to get some nice Grishuk photos. Uh, well, uh, you're not, as I don't have any from this round. Now, yeah, I know it's weird. I always show them to you when someone else is playing. Now I don't have them. Uh, but, you know, what, what are you going to do? Life is uh, weird like that sometimes. Uh, so, without further ado, let's check it out. Uh, Grishuk faces a strong Swedish Grandmaster who was a, a five-time Swedish chess champion. Uh, but he also played uh, uh, active football. Uh, I don't know if he still does, but but uh, it does say uh, on his uh, Wikipedia page that uh, he, he did play it. Uh, but okay, without further ado, Grishuk opens with e4. We have e6, d4, and d5. And uh, again, I, I'm not just showing this game because, uh, you know, uh, the French defense was played. Uh, knight to c3, bishop to b4. We have the winner variation on the board. e5, and now c5. This is all very standard. Uh, a3, attacking the bishop. Now you could go back, which is a really funny line, but here we have bishop captures. Uh, B captures, and now queen to a5, just pressuring that c3 pawn. Uh, the base of this uh, very nice central pawn chain. Bishop to d2 blocking and now just queen to a4 uh, as the bishop now blocked the queen's control of the d4 pawn. Now the queen helps out with, with an attack against the pawn. And here Grishu goes for queen to g4, a standard maneuver when playing against the French. Uh, you defend and attack at the same time, very useful and uh, often if you... Uh, well, if you're a beginner and you're considering on playing the French, you know, just just don't. Uh, but <laughs> uh, if you if you still decide to play the French, then you will often have to use this king to f8 move, which is what Black does here, and it's perfectly fine. Even though you will not be able to castle, Black Black will be safe there. Uh, we have h4 by Grishuk, a very useful move. You know, you wanna uh, well try to bust open the king side as soon as possible as the black king is now on f8 uh, regardless of it of uh, him being very safe there but also if for example knight to e7 to g6 is played you can then kick the knight just away with with h5 uh, and here we have knight to c6 a very nice move that uh, well there is the threat of knight captures on e5 the pawn will not be able to capture as there is uh, well this x-raying tension between the two queens uh, but Grishuk doesn't mind. He plays h5, he's very well prepared, and uh, although black can play knight captures on e5 here, uh, I believe Grandmaster Borisovchenko won uh, a very nice game in this line, uh, but here black doesn't go for it. Black, uh, well, it, like I said, it's a possible move, h6 is a possible move, you know, not allowing white to expand any, fur any further on the king side. Uh, but here we have queen captures on c2, and this idea was never uh, before attempted. Uh, you know, ju just grabbing a pawn, preparing queen to e4 check with, with trading queens. And okay, uh, Grishuk just uh, plays rook to c1, the queen is under attack, we have queen to e4 check, queen captures, pawn captures, and now just knight to e2, uh, defending the d4 pawn. For the moment, black is up a pawn, but it's a double d pawn, uh, it's, it's very unlikely that black will be able to keep it. So here, f5 immediately. Black really wouldn't mind uh, if uh, e captures on, on f6 en passant, followed by g captures, where black would be able to defend his e4 pawn. Of course, um, Grishuk is not interested in that. After f5, we have g4. Uh, just, you know, an, a nice expansion on the king side, also preparing pawn captures here. Uh, we have knight g to e7, uh, and, uh, but even if black captured the, sorry, uh, for uh, first playing the move, then returning it, even if black captured, it doesn't really matter to white. Uh, just rook g1, you will recapture it, black is stuck with a, now a doubled isolated e pawn, so it, it, would, it would just be, you know, a terrible position for black. So after g4, we have knight g to e7, and now just g captures on f5. And here Grishuk is testing Tikkanen if he will uh, try to undouble his pawns by playing pawn captures here, but this would be very dangerous because after knight to f4, uh, white would already be threatening e6 and d5, which would create two connected pass pawns in the center of the board, uh, which, you know, is basically winning for white. And if you try something like captures, captures, and cra captures grabbing a pawn, then rook to c7 just gains insane activity for white. Bishop to b4 is coming, 
uh, you know, with some with some nice attacking ideas. Bishop to h3 is coming, rook is coming to g1. Uh, it would be just an, an overwhelming position for, for black to deal with, and he still has to, well, deal with uh, all, all of the development. So we have knight captures on f5. Uh, bishop to g2, now Grishuk is ready to recapture the e4 pawn. Uh, we have h6 finally by black, and now bishop captures on e4. King to f7, preparing to bring the rook into the game. Uh, rook to g1, uh, and now comes rook to d8, pressuring this d4 pawn. Uh, there was the possibility of capturing on d4 as black is attacking the d4 pawn twice. But there's a problem. If you play c captures, c captures, and you go after the pawn, let's say knight captures, you will capture with the knight. Knight captures, then again you face this very unpleasant rook to c7 check. Uh, the pawns are controlling f6 and g6, also the rook controls g6 and the bishop. So you do have to go back with the king, let's say king f8, if you want to keep on defending your pawn, but it doesn't really help you. Bishop b4 check, and now you just run into some very serious material loss or even if you go to g8 you will suffer uh, a very quick checkmate uh, so not a possibility just yet so first black improves we have rook to d d8 now attacking the d4 pawn once more uh, but now just bishop captures on f5 we have pawn captures and now bishop to e3 adding another defender to the d4 pawn uh, and, uh, well, preparing knight to f4, where, again, uh, the knight from f4 will have excellent control of d6 square. This rook is coming to g6, not a lot black can do to stop this, so, again, uh, a much a much preferred position for white. Uh, bishop to e6, developing, preparing to bring the other rook into the game, but now just knight to f4. Uh, and uh, black doesn't want to allow knight captures bishop, so first bishop to c4. And it's a nice diagonal to control. Uh, we have e6, Grishuk does not waste time, this comes with check, and you can't capture it. If you, if you capture it, then just captures, captures, and rook captures, and again, you're, you're, you're gonna lose this pawn, you're gonna lose this pawn, black is just falling apart here. So, after e6, we have king to g8 by black, getting out of check. Uh, f3, now uh, improving the position, also preparing to bring the king deeper into the game, king h7. King to f2, and now rook a to c8. Black finally brings his last undeveloped rook into the game. Uh, but uh, it's not it's not all that of an impressive square for the rook for the moment. Uh, so Grishuk just goes d captures on c5. Seems like a counterintuitive move. Why would you do this? You know, break up your very strong center. Uh, but this pawn here is extremely solid. The bishop from e3 controls it very nicely. Uh, if you want to remove it, you have to, you'll have to play b6 and uh, lose two pawns for the price of one. Uh, on the other hand, it clears the d4 square for this uh, white's dark square bishop. From there, you will be able to attack the g7 pawn and pressure it very nicely. So there are a lot of reasons to do this. Uh, rook to c7 by black, uh, preparing to defend the g7 pawn, also preparing to stop any further advancement of the, uh, of the pawn. Uh, we have rook c to d1, offering a trade of rooks, and now just rook to e8, preparing to, to, to perhaps capture the e6 pawn. Uh, rook to d6, black, uh, white takes this opportunity to put this rook on a very nice uh, d6 active square, which is a dark square, so black will not be able to kick the rook away with a light square bishop, and also, uh, well, the, the knight isn't any anywhere near kicking this uh, rook uh, away, you'll, you'll have to go something like 97 to, uh, to c8 to, to try and kick it away, but, you know, white also uh, <laughs> uh, has an opportunity to play something. So first we have rook c to e7, now with a triple attack against the pawn here, and here Grishuk just finds uh, a very nice move, he plays bishop to d4, not rook to g6. Rook to g6, you get knight to e5, and you, you allow black some activity. First he goes bishop to d4, and now it's very dangerous. Well, first you take away the e5 square from the knight. Another thing, you are very nicely pressuring the g7 pawn. Uh, and here, if you want to keep on attacking the e6 pawn, let's say you go something like knight here, you attack the pawn, then comes knight to g6. And now black has problems, uh, not just problems, black is lost. Uh, you can't move the rook. Uh, if you move the rook, let's say here, uh, you run into, well, just rook captures on d8, and after you recapture the rook, rook captures, you get e7, and then that, that's just it. Uh, for example, you can go rook c to c8, or you could try blocking it, but it will not help you. Knight f8 check, uh, now you have to move the king, or you have to give up the rook, doesn't really matter, but let's say you go king h8, 
or here just here bishop captures or rook captures if you go there and uh well not not a lot of fun bishop d4 check you force the king back and now rook to g7 will be checkmate so not really possible uh, on the other hand after this knight to g6 move if you play something like uh let's say there's really not uh, <laughs> not all that much you can do if you try rook captures which seems like a reasonable idea uh, again uh, just knight check uh, and now you will either have to give up the exchange or uh, you will just uh, face this rook captures with check king h8 and now you run into uh, well some very unpleasant discoveries uh, white can either go for a nice windmill or just rook to g6 check after king to h7 you can go rook d7 check and now after rook f7 you will capture on d8 with check and now you are threatening rook to h8 checkmate not not much black can do here you can give a couple of checks for example rook e2 check now you you just have to move king g1 rook e1 check king h2 rook e2 check and after king h3 there are no more useful checks rook to h8 will be checkmate uh so after this very nice bishop to d4 move by grishuk uh uh, Tikkanen decided to capture the bishop with knight captures on d4, c captures on d4, Grishuk now undoubles his pawns, uh, and bishop captures on e6. Finally, black recaptures that, uh, well, past e6 pawn and equalizes in material. Five pawns each, but uh, Grishuk has a very nice move, knight to g6. And the idea is similar. The king is still stuck on h7, so knight to f8 will be a threat in every variation. Uh, now you definitely lose the exchange because whatever you do, let's say you try rook here, uh, it's just rook captures, captures, and knight f8 check will pick up the rook. Uh, if you don't do it after knight to g6, if you try something like rook to f7, doesn't really matter. Rook to e1, first you attack the bishop, now the bishop is attacked twice, uh, and after knight, uh, rook defends it, now you just repeat the same variation, captures, 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 and uh, the knight will pick it up, will be leaving white uh, up a whole knight. So, after knight to g6, Tikkanen decided to give up the exchange, we have bishop to f7, uh, but now just knight captures on e7, rook captures on e7, and rook to e1 now. Uh, rook to c7 by black, of course black doesn't want to trade rooks, uh, that's <laughs> pretty much everything white wants, now you just want to, you're up material, you want to keep trading down as much as possible, and then you're just going to win the game. Uh, we have rook to e5, going after the f5 pawn, bishop captures, rook captures, and now bishop back to e8. Here we have rook to f8, pressuring the bishop, bishop to b5, and now uh, Grishuk played f f4, and it was in this position on move 36 that uh, Swedish Grandmaster Hans Tikkanen resigned the game. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, you don't want to play this position against Grishuk. Uh, there's not really not all that much to think about with white. You, you can just move this rook and then push this pawn to victory. Uh, or you can, well, depending on what black plays, let's say he was rook e7, you can just push f5. And then after something like rook e2 check, king f3... Uh, rook moves going after the pawn after this rook moves it will there will be very little black can do for example to prevent checkmate on h8 so there there are even threats like that let's say check captures you can go to f4 again the threat of checkmate is here g5 check you can go here and you know you will just very very quickly checkmate the black king uh, so yeah, after f4, uh, Tikkanen resigned the game, and uh, again, uh, a swift victory for Russia over Sweden. The only draw was on board one between Grandelius and, and Karakin. Uh, all the other uh, boards were won by, by Russian players. Uh, I have the... oops, not that, sorry. Uh, forgot where I put the standings. Yeah, there we have it. I uh, just have to... Uh, sorry about that. Forgot to resize it. Uh, but yeah, there you have it. Russia still in first place after the f uh, penultimate round with 14 points. And tomorrow we do have a clash Russia versus India, but uh, 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 India will not be able to catch up as you can only get two match points per victory. Uh, so yeah, there you have it. It seems uh, Russia Russia wins uh, before the final round even happened, which is a shame. Uh, I was really hoping it would be, uh, you know, uh, really intense in the final round uh, b between Russia and India for the title. Uh, but yeah, India with uh, 11 in second place, England also with 11 in second place, China uh, uh, in fourth place with 10, so China definitely still uh, fighting for uh, fighting for the medal. They had a very rough start, so it's uh, very impressive. They were able to win their today's match even without Ding Liren on board one, and uh, Ding Liren didn't play the, the last previous two games, uh, so he's uh, resting up for the final round, it would seem. Then uh, USA, Iran, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Sweden, and Egypt with three points. Uh, Egypt uh, won 
uh, th their first match. So there you have it with three points. And also I mentioned in my previous video that um, Ali Reza Firoja won his previous two games, maybe even three, and I was actually wrong. He won his five uh, five last games in a row, and then uh, he, now he drew one in this round. So uh, apologies for that. Uh, it, it seems to be five games in a row. Uh, so yeah, uh, there you have it. I do hope you enjoyed that, even though we uh, haven't had any uh, extra Grishuk photos for this uh, video, m maybe for the next one. Uh, I would like to th uh, thank uh, Barry Hertz, uh, Nicola Bench, uh, Gilmore Rowley, uh, David Erdal, and Sean Pittman for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. And uh, I just wanted to mention that, uh, haha, it's uh, very funny that uh, you, you laughed at me in the comments for... Uh, someone trolling me uh, with, with a funny name in the contribution, but uh, you know you also have to consider that it's actually not a funny fake name, rather that it's a real name. I mean, it's it could be a possibility. I'm just saying. And on the other hand, uh, if someone decides to make a contribution to this channel while also making the viewers laugh, I I mean I, I really don't mind. It's a, it's a win-win situation. So you know, uh, th there's that. Uh, and also, um, it's been uh, quite some time now since uh, the, this channel has grew a lot. Uh, we are almost uh, nearing 400,000 subscribers. Uh, I would just like to mention that um, for those of you who are new to the channel, who are new to chess, uh, do check out uh, the, the first thing you will see in the description below will be a link to uh, a famous Paul Morphy game. Do check it out. It's A Night at the Opera. If you haven't seen it, uh, quite, uh, quite a lovely game. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Uh, so there we have it, um, and also I would like to mention uh, the subscribers video is finished. I will be uploading it either today or, or tomorrow, so you know be ready for that. And the subscribers tournament on Leeches will be starting on Friday, uh, on Friday uh, at 6 p.m. Central European time. Uh, so I will also you know keep you up to date uh, on my other social media and in tomorrow's video and such. So yeah, uh, a few updates uh, after the game. I do hope you enjoyed that as well. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, as y you know how it goes. Thank you all, and I'll I, I will see you soon.